Today I'm going to show you the four most common ways that you can orientate flywheels and design flywheels to be able to launch a ball. I'm Brogan Pratt and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. So we're going to look at four different orientations. We're going to take a look at a single wheel on a black plate. We're going to look at a dual horizontal, a dual vertical, and then what's often called a hooded or a curved shooter. By the end of today, you should have a little bit more inspiration as well as some more knowledge as to when you should use one of these four designs and when you might want to consider looking at another piece. Let's get started at looking at the simplest of flywheel designs, which is of course the single flywheel on a flat back plate. So the idea of this flywheel is you have a flat black plate. <laughs> you have a flat back plate that the ball will slide along and eventually come in contact with the flywheel that will kick it out across. Best thing about this flywheel is it's super simple to make. All you need is a flat surface and one wheel spinning real quick one direction and you can have a flywheel up and running in a very short period of time. It only needs one motor though you may have more uh, speed out of this if you attach two motors to it. And it's pretty easy to align this because you only have one axis. You don't have to worry about compression. You don't have to worry too much about that and your axis being out of line because you're simply using a single axle here. So it makes life pretty easy. Now, some of the drawbacks of this design is that you end up with uneven force. Now, that could be a plus in some respects in that you are going to apply some spin to this ball because as you are rotating the ball this way, the ball is going to want to spin in the opposite direction from the way that your flywheel is going. So you're going to get a little bit of backspin on this ball or forward spin, depending on what direction you're firing this uh, or what orientation you're firing this single wheel from. You're also going to get a little bit less accurate because of that, and you're going to get a little bit of scraping on the ball, depending on how rough or smooth or sticky your actual backplate surface is. Making a single flywheel more accurate is going to be a little bit more compression on the wheel here, a little bit more stick on your surface that doesn't slide and slip. So let's go take a look at this single flywheel in action. Another very common orientation is the horizontal placement of two flywheels. So as these flywheels spin opposite, as you load a ball through your hopper, it spins both wheels opposite and is able to launch it straight out. Now the nice thing about this is that it uh, if as long as you can keep your motors balanced, you end up with a pretty straight shot and you don't actually end up applying any spin to the ball. You also have two motors, so you end up having uh, twice the uh, torque, well, roughly about twice, not, not quite twice, uh, to be able to apply that impulse to the ball. You can get nice straight shots, uh, and it's used in a lot of sports balls launches you've probably seen. You've probably seen football launches coming out of this. You've probably seen tennis. You may have even seen American football launches. Uh, in one of these. Um, and it is a great, uh, efficient way that is used a lot in industry to be able to fire a ball uh, straight out. Now, you do need two motors that are running at equal speeds, because what will happen is if this wheel is running faster than this wheel, you apply more of an impulse, and then you'll end up curving your ball out. But maybe that actually is what you want. You would be able to get curved shots using one of these, having them at different speeds. Uh, and it does allow you to require precise spacing between these as well. So those are some things to think about if you are going to make a dual horizontal. Let's take a look at this firing in action. Now, another orientation is one of the things I always uh, tell people when they're 3D modeling is to always be changing your perspective. So rather than having this launch horizontally, you can also pretty simply have this launch as a vertical launcher instead. So as your ball comes through the hopper, you have two balls on the top and bottom axes respectively. And this changes things quite a bit. Rather than having a little bit of uh, potential for left and right deviation, a horizontal launcher, you're now more likely to be able to go straight. It also allows you to get a little bit closer to the ground, pitch things up maybe. Uh, it might make packaging a little simpler if this is an option you may have. Uh, another interesting thing you can do is you can make the bottom wheel spin faster than the top wheel and you can apply a bit of a back spin to the ball. And when you apply a backspin, you can take advantage of something called the Magnus effect, which will allow the ball to naturally start to float up as it is backing in. Uh, Veritasium has a great video on that where he takes a basketball and throws it off of a hydroelectric dam, and you can really see the Magnus effect in action there. Now, something to think about on these style is it can be a little challenging to get and to package where your hopper might be. 
but it's not too much of a difference between these horizontal style as well. Uh, how you're going to feed these things in doesn't really uh, change too much, but it does uh, require some different uh, complex. It just depends on how you're going to be packaging these designs, uh, which one, which axis you want to take up more space on. So let's take a look and see how the vertical launcher differs in its launch style compared to the horizontal launcher. The most complex flywheel we're going to be taking a look at today is the hooded flywheel shooter. The intention, and this is just a super RAF uh, prototype, the intention is you have a curved surface that runs along for quite a while, and that allows you to increase your contact area with your flywheel to that curved surface. And the more contact time that you have with the ball on your curved surface, the more time and the more transfer of energy you're going to get to your ball to be able to actually launch one of these uh, up and out of the way. Because you have more contact time on the ball, that does mean you're going to need less compression for this design to work. It's also a bit complex to decide how much of a curved surface. On this design, I don't have actually much contact area, uh, but typically a hooded shooter is going to have a, a far larger curve. I'll show you an example of a CAD of what that might look like up on the screen. So you can see on this CAD file that I've got much more curve all the way across. So there's far more contact area with the ball. There's far more time for that impulse to be able to transfer to that ball. Now, the benefit of a hooded shooter is it allows you to, if you need to, you can more finely tune, adjust that hood so you can have a different outcoming angle. So it's kind of like a ramp and a flywheel in one. Makes it a little more compact, but it does increase your packaging a little bit. It's also easier for you to transfer more force to your ball because you have far more contact area for that ball to come up. While those are lots of pluses to it, one of the biggest downsides of this is, is it's a lot more complex to be able to design. To be able to design, where should my hood end up fishing? How much compression do I need? When you're designing these things, it's a lot more challenging to get that amount of compression inside. So when you're first initially designing, I highly suggest you think like slots where you can push and adjust where your compression needs to be so that you don't need to redesign your entire flywheel every single time. Uh, this is also an, uh, has an adjustable angle on it as well, so that you are capable of changing the angle of your design as that goes out uh, relatively quickly. So let's go take a look at this shooter in action. That's a good overview of different types of flywheels. You can have a single flywheel. You can also mount that one vertically or horizontally against a back plate. You can have two horizontal, two vertical. You can also do a hooded style shooter. You can make your flywheels thicker. You can make them thinner. You can add more weight on the outside. All these things will change, but this should be a good idea of finding out what different ways you can orientate a flywheel or flywheels to be able to drive a ball. Uh, if you want access to the CAD for these tutorials, uh, you can consider joining the community down below where I've got uh, links to all those CADs. Um, otherwise, best of luck on your robotics projects. Leave a comment down below if you've got any questions and I'll do my best to answer them out.